Hey there, so I did a review of this same cook set years ago now, um, consisting of the MSR Titan kettle, titanium, 550 milliliters, um, and the Snow Peak titanium gigapower stove. Uh, and I really like it, I've been using it for years, um, and I had decided to test a couple things today. <clears throat> First of all, I've heard that a cold canister is far less efficient than a warm one. So what I've been doing is waking up and just like shoving the canister in, in my pants or putting it in the sun for a while to let it warm up before I used it. So I wanted to try to test the efficiency difference. Um, and secondly, I wanted to, I saw this at REI, and this is the Snow Peak windscreen, and it sits, I'll show you, screw this on. So that windscreen sits right nicely in the prong to the stove, which I thought was great. I was like, awesome. I don't have to deal with this stupid foil fold up windscreen anymore. I can just use this one that's made specifically for this stove. So I've been using that. Um, the windscreen that I would use historically is this, which is a piece of black wrap um, in the film industry. It's used to um, control the spill from lights and uh, things like that. So it's basically extra thick tin foil and it's black. Uh, and you can get that online if you just, any kind of film uh, supply store has black wrap. And that's, I found that to be the best windscreen material. It doesn't last forever, but it's better than heavy duty tin foil. Um, and uh, it's black and I don't know if that helps the thermal, you know, transfer or whatever. So my question was, does this windscreen do what this does, or which one is better, or should I use both? So I set up a test where I had 350 milliliters of water in here, um, and I started it at 65 degrees, and I went to 200. And I used the thermometer, and measured it, and first I did the test inside with a cold canister. I cooled the canister to 40 degrees, which is about what it would be if you woke up um, in the mountains, or at least where I go. Uh, and, and then I recorded the weight of the canister before and after so I could tell exactly how many grams of gas were used and the time it took to reach 200 degrees from 65 degrees. Um, so the first test I did was actually inside, so there was no wind involved at all. And the cold canister um, took four minutes, 30 seconds to boil, well, to get to 200, which is almost boiling and use six grams of fuel. And then I warmed the canister to room temperature and did the test again. So room temperature right now is 72 degrees. And the time on it was 250, so it was more than a minute less, but it only used, it actually used seven grams. So my scale is maybe, you know, two grams either way. It's a food scale, so it's pretty accurate, but um, <clears throat> basically there was no difference in my simple test here between a cold canister and a warm one. Now maybe that is partially because the canister heats up pretty quickly when it starts burning. Um, it seemed to take less time with a warm canister, but maybe that's simply because the output got bigger or it was able to hit the sweet spot of, you know, a larger flame quicker. I can't really say. Um, now what I was using for that test was this screen and not the foil, but there was no wind inside, so that's not really an issue. So basically the cold, if you wake up and your canister is cold, you can wait 20 minutes with it in your pants to warm it up, but maybe you should just cook with it because it's going to save you a gram or two um, in your, in, during your cooking. So that was the first test. Um, the second test was how wind affected it. Um, and so I did a test outside and um, I would say it was, it was pretty gusty. There's still a little bit of wind here, you know, not terribly windy, but significant wind. Um, I did the test with this windscreen, with just the foil, and with both. Now obviously with foil, when you're working with a canister stove, you got to make be very careful that the heat from the burner does not heat up the canister and, you know, take your eye out with a fun but um, devastating explosion. So I always use the windscreen very loosely like this and I check frequently to make sure that the canister is not getting too hot. 
So that's important to do. So the first test I did, um, well, let's say we start with both. So with both, I again used eight grams of gas, um, which is very close to what I did inside. And it was about you know th three minutes, which was very comparable to the inside test. Um, so with both, it does a pretty good job of cutting down on the wind and taking away from the inefficiency. Then I did the test with only the foil. So that would have been without this windscreen, which is sometimes finicky to get off because you gotta have it lined up right. So just the foil used like this with the pot on top, obviously. Um, and I thought, you know, this would probably do a good job of reflecting the heat back up into the pot and also cut down a little bit on the wind as well, but there was no significant difference. The time was almost, was exactly the same at right around three minutes and it was used eight grams of gas. So now I'm wondering, is this worth it at all? So I did the test without the foil and with this guy in there. And with that combination, it was horrible. <laughs> um, the windscreen, or you know, this it does a good job of, it, it, it looks, the flame is more consistent, so it looks like it's doing its job, but really it's, uh, it was three times worse than just the foil. Um, so it used 24 grams of fuel and took 10 minutes to get to 200 degrees from 65 degrees. And it did this thing where the wind was hitting, you know, hitting it right here. And my guess is the wind was also just sucking so much, not only affecting the um, efficiency of the flame, but just sucking so much warmth away from the pot that the thermometer was going up and going up and it stalled right around between 190 and 200 or 195. And you could watch it as the wind came in and there was a huge, you know, a prolonged gust of wind, the temperature would fall. And then as the wind stopped again, it would pick back up. So it took a full 10 minutes and used 24 grams of fuel, as opposed to only using this foil, used eight grams of fuel and took three minutes. So basically it's uh, underlying what I already knew that um, the wind is probably the biggest thing you need to account for when you're cooking outside over you know, other, many other factors. Wind is probably the biggest thing wind stealing warmth from your pot and wind affecting the efficiency of the flame. And instead of all this heat going in there, the heat going away. So my, you know, I think it's two things. It's the wind, but also this metal is reflecting a lot of the heat back into the pot. Of course, that makes sense. Um, just gotta make sure you're not overheating your canister. And I'm, you know, you could even think about punching some holes around the bottom. I know a lot of, um, there's some aftermarket wind screens and even like full cook sets like the um, Trail Designs Caldera Cone that, you know, have the, the holes in the bottom and go up. I don't think you used, I mean, the Caldera cone is not for use with canisters, but um, my point is you just have to be really careful that you're not gonna explode the canister because that's the biggest danger. So my conclusion is that this piece of foil at half an ounce is one quarter the weight of this windscreen from Gigapower from Snow Peak and it works three times as well. So I'm thinking about leaving this at home from now on. It's two ounces, um, which is pretty significant if you're ultra lighting. And like I said, this is half an ounce, folds in thirds and then rolls up, rolls right inside my kettle there. Um, so those are my findings. Again, it was, every test was 350 milliliters in the pot and it went from 65 degrees to 200 degrees. And just to recap, with just the foil, used eight grams of fuel and took about three minutes. With the foil plus the snow peak, it was exactly the same, used eight grams of fuel, took about three minutes. But with just the Gigapower windscreen, it took 10 minutes and took 24 grams of fuel. So I think I'm gonna be bringing this from now on. Hope, that, hope that's helpful for someone. And as my friend Dave says, go out there and get after it.